Hi everyone, I'm Rick Bensignor, and welcome to this week's In The Know Trader Show. Well, it's been quite a week since last Tuesday's uh, show. Stocks, bonds, and gold have exploded to new highs as expectations of a more accommodative Fed brought buys back into equities. Uh, gold certainly has burst higher on the dollar's decline, along with massive fund buying and short covering. Before we get into today's show, uh, just a reminder for In The Know Trader subscribers that I'll be hosting a client-only webinar this Friday at noon, Eastern Daylight Time. Login details will go out today for that. Check your email inboxes. And uh, today we're gonna focus on kind of what I'll say the fang and fangy type names, kind of culty names, names that most people have uh, in their portfolios. So here's kind of what my plan is to go through. Um, and of course, depending upon time and, and how long it takes us to get through each chart, I hope to get through all of these. But um, you'll see these, these names here include all the major FANG names. Plus, I've thrown in Tesla, which is not a FANG name, um, but certainly it's a culty type name. Um, and uh, it's actually got a pretty important double bottom. So we'll take a look at that. Cisco, Intel, Adobe, we've added into uh, the names include, as well as uh, Micron and AMD. So um, let's kind of take a look and go through those. But as often, we'll start off just talking about the market in general. So let's go here and take a look at, uh, this is S&P, sectors relative to the S&P uh, performance this year. So anything above the zero line is outperforming. So you can see that technology and real estate all the way on the far right are the two clear winners this year. The big losers remain energy and healthcare. Um, and now financials also with you know interest rates staying low um, and making new lows on the year and the 10 years just about 2% or so. Uh, that certainly doesn't help financials. Uh, the higher the interest rates are, the more money banks make, and therefore that's why you're seeing the financials underperform this year. The other ones are kind of close to, you know, 2%, 2.5% either side, let's say, of where the S&P is, so that's normal variation. Um, but, and, and, you know, if you use stock charts and look at their performance charts, this is, um, and, and, choose the one of the default modes they have, which is the S&P macro sectors. This is a great way to just in a, you know, quickly get a sense of what's going on in the market, where you want to be looking at. And generally, um, you know, when, when I look at this, it means that for the most part, if I'm looking for money making opportunities, I'm going to stick with the best performers to generally look uh, to play on the long side and to short energy and healthcare type names uh, on, on bounces. Of course, relative, these were all relative to the S&P. So um, that doesn't mean you can, you just sell a healthcare name and expect it to make money. What you do is you expect it to underperform what the S&P does. Um, so these are ways, you know, I look at this in the sense of kind of how to hedge books, where you want to hedge. Um, if I'm long, let's say, spiders, the S&P 500 ETF in, in an account, and I think uh, the market may come off, uh, if I want to lighten up some exposure instead of selling out of the spiders, I might lighten by selling, let's say, the underperforming sectors, thinking that, okay, uh, if the market goes down, these should do worse. And if the market goes up, they, my short in these sectors won't hurt me as much. My S&P long will still make more money. So really important to always know what the sectors are doing. And again, tend to concentrate uh, your plays on the ones that are at the extremes as compared to uh, the ones that are close to doing what the S&P does. Because for instance, if, if you play XLI, which is let's say the spider industrial uh, ETF, you know, that's outperforming by 2.69%, but it's going to be hard to figure out, is that a hedge? Should, should I just buy that outright, etc. Same thing with Staples, outperforming by less than 1%. There's not much you can do with that. Um, so that's why we generally start off with this. And you, you always, just as um, observers of the market, you always kind of want to know 
what's going on there. So now let's take a look at uh, charts. Let's uh, also, it's when we start with uh, absolute price charts, let's look at the S&P itself. Uh, that I at least give you my, my take on each week. Um, and of course, in, in the No Trader, we go much more in depth into this and, and, and do you know, specific recommendations on how to play the market as well as um, ETFs recommendations that I put out each week. So here's the look at uh, the S&P. And on the lower left side here, you know, here's the Christmas here. Again, I'd like to use ellipses, easy to see. So, you know, here's the Christmas low that we've just highlighted. And of course, the large up move since the pullback that we had basically into June 1st and then the rally since. So certainly we continue to stall in and around 2950, the same approximate levels that was the February high. Um, no, actually the October high from last year. Um, and so we still have not burst out to the upside, but I think it's just a matter of time that we do. So there's a couple of things here that we look at on the charts on a consistent basis. One is something called a trend factor. That's a measurement that DeMarc, uh, Tom DeMarc came up with. There are increments of 5.56%, um, and it is uncanny how often markets will move in increments of approximately 5.5%. Um, and what we do is, uh, when, if you've sold off 5.5% from some prior high, then once you make a bottom, you can start measuring up. And um, the first trend factor up has a different rule than the rest of them. So the next one is up here, and we'll get to that in a second, kind of the dotted pink line that's just behind. But the first one's in, in this brown level here at 29, we'll say 29.55. Um, and that's essentially the high from a couple of days ago and last week, so that's Thursday and Friday last week. So we are stalling against it. Um, Instead of taking 5.56% from the low, the first one measures from the close of the day you made a low, unless you gap higher the next day, which we did. So this actually is measuring 5.56% from this close of 2803. Um, and, and says this level is a potential level of resistance. If we properly break through it, then another 5.56% higher measures to 3184. And in a bigger bull market, if we got it this year, that would be uh, the bigger target to the upside. But the first target that we've written about and tell clients is 3033. Uh, that is the propulsion exhaustion level from this signal in here, this teal colored, uh, these little triangles here, uh, got a proper breakout to the upside, suggesting that there's enough force and physics in the market to, to um, thrust the S&P ultimately higher to 3032. So that, that is uh, our target. And just coincidentally, that happens to be two trend factors up from the low. So that's why we're honing in kind of on that level as our next key level that we expect. Once we push through all these old highs and in around 29.50, uh, we should get some thrust and extend up to 3032. If we happen to pull back and you get a chance to, to do some buying your, we'll see in the round numbers, 2850, where we've got this level circled here in purple and yellow highlighted, uh, 2847 is an important short-term level. So that's why I'm saying if the market gave you a chance there, uh, we'd, we'd probably uh, look to be buyers there. So, but in the bigger picture, 3032, and in a bigger, bigger bull market, we'll say 3184 are upside targets. Uh, that's the S&P. Now let's take a look at some of these uh, fangy names. So we'll start off with Apple. Apple's all-time highs were made last October when the S&P had made its all-time high. Now, of course, the S&P has come back. Uh, most of the fang names have not come back to make all-time highs. And notice a few things, very important elements here from the cloud chart. Uh, even though price had broken through the cloud, which of course puts you on major warning, it occurred on a weekly set of nine count, which suggested possible downside exhaustion. A lagging line also held within its cloud. So this never went into pure bearish mode. Uh, it certainly had you cautious, um, but, but not an outright short. The, the subsequent up move from the December bottom, notice it topped both at the top of the weekly cloud as well as the propulsion exhaustion signal from 
this level here. Um, so again, the physics kind of suggested breakthrough here, get up to this level. We sold down, we held the propulsion exhaustion signal on the downside, and now we've climbed back up. My only concern here is that we're already on a week 11 towards a 13 uh, in the sequential count. So for the next couple of weeks, uh, Apple turns around and gets back towards this propulsion target around, which is uh, 207, and uh, that coincides with 13, that may be a place to lighten up. And of course, if I took a trend line off of the all-time high. Let's see where that comes in relative to that 207 level. You know what, in two weeks or so, it's just about the same place. So you could get a 13 upside exhaustion signal at a propulsion exhaustion level against the downturn line from all-time highs. That says to me, if you're long Apple, you probably wanna take some off. If it breaks through, you might wanna put it back on or ride what you still have left, but, but somewhere between 205 and 210 over the next couple of weeks suggests that there would be resistance if we get there. So that's a look at Apple. Let's take a look at Amazon. All-time highs also has not uh, broken through yet, so we've got a downtrend line that's still active. Last week's high got very close to it. It's fading a little bit from it. Uh, and Apple is now broken under 1900. Uh, so you do have at least potential short term uh, double top over, well, let's just say in 2019, there is a nine here on the high. Uh, so you would need to kind of properly break through this line to next target 2000 uh, in a bigger bull market. Ultimately, this would say that you could get as high as 2230 ish or so as a target. On the downside, Bulls are going to want to see, uh, what is this, 1592 hold? And I realize that's still, you know, huge distance away, but that's the way uh, the stock trades. So those are the key levels. In fact, I'll tell you 1778 or so and 1592 are the key levels uh, of support. They don't report, if I recall, until mid-July or so. So this is going to kind of trade, you know, on its own without earnings affecting it. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna go with the market for the for the most part and what other fang type names do. Um, let's take a look at uh, Netflix next. So Netflix also another name that still we can draw two trend lines from, and and that's kind of our resistance area. So even Notice that last week we got right to the propulsion level and stopped there. You need to get above this correctly. So you need Friday closes above 371 and change. Uh, it's not going to happen or can't happen this week to get a proper breakout. But if this week closes, if this Friday closes less than last Friday, and then next Friday we close above 371 and gap higher the next Monday, then you're talking about a 410 target to ultimately. Where's that 487 or so is, is the next level. Um, so on the downside, you can see uh, this has held the decline of the propulsion. Downside level of 338 has held, uh, what is that, one, two, two weeks ago and three weeks ago. If that breaks correctly, then the target down becomes 290. So this is kind of do not much here. If you're long the name, same thing. This is the type of thing you might want to take a little profits. If it breaks out to the upside, you put it back on, but at least you've done something on this rally uh, to potentially take some profits. And you're still, look, within the context of these larger 13 upside exhaustion signals that have been around uh, and that very nicely kind of helped call the high and the decline last summer into last fall and early winter. That's, uh, that's Netflix. What do we have next year? Let's go to Facebook. So Facebook, we've come right to the downtrend line. Last week's high, this week's high, right against it. Same type thing I'll say, if this week closes, this Friday closes less than last Friday's close, and then um, the following week, well, actually, we're so close to where the target is, it almost, it's, it's not much to play for. But it would at least suggest that um, 198 and a half or so comes into play as a target, um, 
in a bigger up move if if the whole stock market explodes to the upside. Facebook's got a 236 or so uh, target up there. And the downside key levels to hold are 174, breaking underneath 174. Uh, properly kind of gets you down to 150. This is a name, I, I actually own this name, I'm already out of it. Um, and I'm out of it more for, uh, how shall I say, it's, it's not political, it's just um, I, I occasionally look at Facebook, but I certainly don't like what they're doing as a company as far as privacy issues. And to me, it's hard for me to be in a name that I kind of don't agree with what the company does. Um, and that may or may not affect you as an investor. Some people like, I'll, I, I won't buy cigarette stocks because I'm, not only am I not a smoker, I just, it goes against, you know, me personally to, to kind of invest in something that likely gives you cancer. Um, so I, I tend to shy away from that, even though uh, Philip Morris was probably one of the best names to own for, I don't know, 50 to the last 75 years or so. It's, it's one of the all-star performers, but, it's just not an name I'm going to buy. Facebook kind of fits into that. Uh, this thing could explode to the upside, and and I'll just always watch it at this point because I personally am not going to get into it. But for those of you who like to play, you've got uh, right now we can kind of make a triangular pattern. Uh, clearly, there's resistance now uh, from the downtrend uh, line from the highs, and we certainly could fill in this unfilled gap here. Uh, over the next few weeks. So um, to me, I, th I think I'd look at this as if you, the more weekly closes you can get, uh, I'll just say above 199, uh, the better the chance that, you know, over time this gets up there. But that, that's, that's my take. On that, let's see what we've got next. Let's go to Google. Google's been struggling recently. Um, so it's got a double top against all-time highs, right? So this year's high matched last year's high. Uh, we hit the propulsion target that was also in place at, uh, where is that, 12.85 or so. So, you know, that was kind of perfect in identifying uh, where we'd run out of steam. Sold off and have done a nine count, but the problem here is, is that the low of the move came in at bar six. Generally, we don't like playing nines when bar six or seven is the bottom of the nine count. Um, the same way here, just for showing you, bar six was the high. So this did a bar nine, but at the minimum, I'd wait to see the next week we finally went higher, and that, it's, well, that's called that perfects the nine. So I wouldn't even think, I uh, wouldn't have thought of selling uh, until I at least perfected the nine count. Here, because bar six is the low, um, it wouldn't surprise me with a double top if we come down and potentially, look, we've got kind of a double bottom. In fact, we could even say we've got more than the double bottom. Uh, so anywhere into these where, where I've just drawn these, these uh, deep maroon lines are all possible downside targets somewhere near a thousand. Um, so this one's kind of tougher for me uh, to think about buying because of how this nine counts lined up. The other thing to pay attention to here is that we've seen price get under its cloud, but the lagging line hasn't. So on the, on the up move, let's see how far we can go back years. All right. So you have to go back to, uh, when is that? 2011, the last time the lagging line, which is this blue line from the cloud model, got beneath the bottom of its cloud. If we go and test this 1,025 to 1,000 level, this blue line, which is nothing more than current price pushed back in time, is going to break through its cloud, which kind of turns Google into a sale, um, which is going to make it much harder to be a buyer here. Um, my guess is it'll hold here the first time, um, as long as there aren't regulatory issues, and that's kind of what's been plaguing Google as of near term. Um, so we've got to see, uh, for, for right now, I've got no position in on this. I may be a buyer for a test it down here again, but I'm also going to be wary of the fact that it's kind of turned into a sell uh, if the lagging line breaks underneath the bottom of the cloud, which right now is somewhere around 1,055. So this, this one's going to be a tough one. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft, 
It's clearly the best name that we've looked at. It's on all-time highs. It made an all-time high this week. Uh, back in December, the cloud acted as support just like it's supposed to. Let's bring in some more data and see. All right, so this also, you have to go back to 2011, the last time the lagging line was beneath the cloud. So uh, I take it back. Looks like early 13, late 12, early 13. So for over six years, this has been in bullish mode. It's been a heck of a run. Um, and if you're long the name, um, the, you're on an 11 count here. There are other 13. Some of these are going to work for very short term. Some are not going to work at all because it's the strongest name and the biggest cap name out there. Uh, this targets, where is that, 156 and change over time. Um, I have not seen, let's look here. So going back a few years, there's only one propulsion signal that actually is qualified and confirmed, uh, and it works. So you've got to get under 130 uh, to and high change on a Friday close, not, uh, let's see, up close, down close. Yeah, it could, if this Friday you close under 132.85, um, and next Monday gaps lower, uh, it would put you in a propulsion sell signal, but the same thing, the downside's not big. It's only 127 and change, and then a bigger down move, it would target 160. And this one's also tough. I don't think it's going to come back uh, or pull back much unless the whole market does. Now, uh, the S&P is off today, but that's one day. Um, and uh, um, you, if, if you're long the name, it's, it's not crazy to take a little off. But, you know, if, you, if you've, you've been holding this for a while, you're going to have tax implications too. Um, Microsoft right now is the king of all stocks. And uh, unless you're a tactical short-term trader, I suspect that this is a name that you want to hold over time. Um, and then it's certainly proven itself to be. So, um, in fact, let's take a look at a monthly. So, monthly cloud short. Um, we had a 13 here, it broke there. So I'd say if this pulled back down towards the, the conversion line, which is the first support level, um, it's not a bad place to put some on. And 102 and a bigger um, pullback, or, or this is going to move over time, but this is a monthly, so it's not going to change much. But next month, it'll be a little higher. Um, these are the two levels I'd look to uh, put exposure on. There's no reason to think that this is going to pull back to its monthly cloud. Um, not at least now, there's no reason to. So it's still a great long-term name. In fact, let's even look at a quarterly chart. How's that for a 13 going <laughs> into 2000? Um, and you're only on a six now. So, I mean, long-term, the only thing is your father's, so you're, you're the most overbought you've been. Look at the distance, a uh, current price away from the clouds, uh, the quarterly conversion line. So this is uh, just in percentage terms, a huge move away. It's over 30% away. Uh, so, which means right now I can't be a buyer um, to first initiate a long position. I'd wait for some type of pullback or at least go sideways to have uh, the lines kind of come closer. But this is, this is a, a you know, terrific, chart and generally uh, a name you want to you want to keep and and hold over time um let's move on micron and by default um i look at weekly charts um for this unless we're tactically trading um we're going to look at kind of the big picture uh so we do have an upside exhaustion signal on the high we sell we did break through the cloud you've now got this, this did go into sell mode. You do have cloud resistance overhead, um, and it's even got an active propulsion signal, uh, which is suggesting that it measures down to 2672. Uh, so for right now, um, the only thing this has got going for it, let me put on what's called the TDST line. That line here, this dotted red line, is what it's holding right now. Uh, that's the lowest low in the most recent nine count up. So that is holding a support. Uh, Friday close under, especially if this week closes above last Friday's close. So we have an up week. If next week we close underneath this level, 
then that greatly increases the odds that this is going down to 26. So um, if you're if you're tactical, you could take you, you could be a buyer saying for a month it held this level and play for an up move. Um, but if you buy it, then you're out on any Friday close that's beneath this 3266 level. Um, and um, you need proper Friday closes above 42 and change uh, to target as high up as uh, 58. So, um, or is that 56? No, I'm sorry, that's 56. Uh, so again, not, not a lot to do unless you want to play against the recent support here and then you have a fairly tight stop. So that, that's, you know, from a trading perspective, this isn't bad because you've got a base here over the last month uh, that happens to be the same place that the lowest low in the nine count was. So, um, you know, you risk two bucks here on the chance that you're right and that this base here is, is a good base and that we don't go back and take down the December low. But I, again, I wouldn't risk more than two bucks on this. Um, let's take a look at, let's go to Tesla because lots of people have very strong opinions about this name. Um, I'm going to take the cloud off because it's really not going to help much. And it kind of just gets in the way. It's too choppy. So look, um, the important things to see here, go back in time, 2014 at the time, all time high, 13 signal, 13 signal, 13 signal. This has been so upside exhaustion has the, the one bad one was in here. Um, so these have been pretty darn good. We sell off recently, just you know, a month ago, and we get down to the October 16 low. But now you should have kind of, there's no one level, but you start eyeballing this chart and somewhere, here, let's put a, somewhere in there is kind of the breakdown from the double bottom. So that should be, you start getting resistance uh, in the 250-ish neighborhood. You're going to have a very sharply sloped downtrend line. Um, you know, I, uh, unfortunately, there's no um, there's no nine count here to look at where that TDST line would suggest there's resistance either. Um, let's just take a look at a monthly if that. You no, know, let's look at a daily and just see if that comes up with. Um, so here within the midst of, you know, if this thing climbs back over 300, again, that's way away from where it is now, but um, that's probably, if, if you fundamentally are against this name, and there are a lot, a lot of shorts out there, there are a lot of funds that think the stock is, is gonna go well under $100. Um, but but they, they now have, the, they themselves have to deal with this double bottom. Uh, but my guess is they're gonna add to shorts between 260 and anywhere up to 300-ish or so. Uh, because you've got a ton of trap buyers up here. And so this should be very strong overhead resistance for quite some time. We are actually out of time this week. Uh, so I want to thank you. There's a couple names we didn't get to, but uh, you get a pretty good sense of what these fangy type names look like. And uh, thank you for listening. I'm Rick Bensignor, and this is In The Note Trader. Mm -hmm.